I would now invite on stage Mr. K.V. Deepu, Senior President, Head of Operations and Customer Service, Bajaj Alliance General Insurance, for his closing for his closing keynote. So, good evening, everyone. Yeah, I received a request from uh, you know from the organizers, you know, and from many people in the audience, you know, to keep it uh, really crisp. It's a Saturday evening, you know, and normally a keynote is at the beginning of the conference, you know, but it's happening, you know, at the end of day two. And you had a long day starting from 8.45 a.m. You're waiting for the awards. You're waiting for, you know, cocktails and dinner. So I said, okay, you know, let me listen to the audience. So I kept mine, you know, really crisp. Hopefully I'll finish in uh, five minutes. The topic, uh, you know, which uh, I received, and I received it, you know, just yesterday, is, uh, you know, how do we create a future-ready organization and also focus on the rising significance of application migration. Um, nothing new to the distinguished audience here. You know, unlike a conference which normally happens in a big city where, you know, you have the CXs on stage and then you have, you know, normal audience members. Yeah, the audience itself, you know, comprises, you know, distinguished, you know, members of the fraternity, right? So, you know, nothing new to you, right? So I really had to think, you know, how do I, you know, try and make it interesting and of course, you know, in the shortest possible time. So first on, uh, you know, future ready organization, uh, you know, there is a lot of research out there, but I thought, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, captures, uh, you know, the nine imperatives, and I'll try and explain this, you know, with a few examples. Uh, and I can only talk about, you know, what we have done, you know, in terms of how we can be future ready, you know, what are the organizational imperatives which will separate, you know, the future ready companies from the pack. The last couple of years, you know, when we had to prepare for the pandemic, and we all know COVID-19 is not the last black swan event that we have seen. And the challenge for us is, Tomorrow, we need to come up with an answer for, you know, we don't know what form and, you know, shape, you know, something may hit us, right? So this is in three buckets. Uh, the first is, you know, who we are. And I think that is what, you know, differentiates the good from the great, you know, especially when you go through testing times. So uh, what's your purpose, right? Today, you've seen a lot of articles on how purpose outweighs even passion. Right? So, so be very, very clear about that. You know, that helps you really sail through, uh, you know, times when you have to be prepared for the future. And uh, adding to that are two dimensions, you know, which is how do you sharpen your value agenda and also drive culture, right? Because we all have seen that. So that is, you know, the, the cluster of three circles, you know, that you see at the center. The second is, uh, you know, how do we operate, right? So we all have, you know, seen and experienced, you know, how we need to flatten structures, especially, you know, when you have work from home, right? Take a typical team leader in a call center structure. He is not having 15 people whom he can monitor, right? When you work from home, people are working in a scattered environment. Everybody has to monitor himself. So the more you flatten, the better the outcome. The other angle is, uh, you know, we all have heard about the talent wars, right? So you need to treat talent as if it is scarcer than capital, right? I mean, it's a no-brainer. So clearly, that's one aspect of how we operate. And the third is, you know, how fast can you decide, right? We all have seen, you know, situations where we had to take, you know, decisions on the fly, right? The days of you know, waiting for data, you know, and more data, you know, are gone. So I think that's clearly in terms of, you know, how we operate. And the third is, you know, how do we grow? Uh, there is, you know, a philosophy, you know, which is gaining ground, which is that today it's not about conglomerates, you know, but uh, ecosystems, right? How do you, it's not about one firm doing everything, but it's about how firms, you know, who are the best at what they do, how do they come together to create a platform or an ecosystem so that the customer gets a one-point solution or an end-to-end -end value chain. And you're seeing that playing its, itself out in various industries. The other is, of course, you know, data rich. Uh, we all have been, you know, hearing a lot about data and analytics. Uh, but I think what's important is when you look at it from a customer journey point of view, do you also have a data journey? Are you able to figure out what are the various touch points and how can you leverage each touch point to the maximum? And of course, you know, accelerate organizational learning. Just in our morning panel discussion today, we were talking about the scarcity of talent and how reskilling, you know, and ensuring that, you know, people come up the curve, you know, is absolutely essential to being future ready. So these are the three buckets. And uh, what I did is, you know, just picked up, you know, one circle from each, from each of the three buckets, and then talk about, you know, for example, what we've done. Uh, if you talk about treating, you know, talent, uh, you know, as scarcer than capital, uh, you are special, you know, is something which we believe in and we rolled out. So we just want to ensure that all our employees, right, I mean, the talent that we have, which is really what defines the organization, you know, really feels, you know, they are special. So uh, if you look at this uh, 50, 30, 20, I'll just touch upon that, you know, in the subsequent slide. This is in terms of reskilling, you know, what are the three dimensions that we are focused on so that even the workforce can be future ready. 
and that's precisely you know what uh, you know we have here uh, if you look at the heading today you know it's not about ev evolving right today you don't have time to evolve you know you need to move from evolution to revolution so from a training perspective you know or a reskilling perspective you know what are the various dimensions you focus on so 50% of it is clearly upskilling uh, as i mentioned in the morning the days of formal education and then saying that i'm good for the next few years are gone today you need to keep learning every day right and you see that a lot of people even after their formal education while working you know they're enrolling for various courses right and we've seen that happen you know across the entire spectrum so you need to continuously you know upskill and update yourself the second aspect is learning on the job uh, especially you know when you had covid and then you know you had you know people working from home you saw how firms were able to immediately gravitate from physical classroom sessions to digital sessions and i received a very interesting uh, uh, you know insight you know from a from a trainer the trainer said earlier when you had physical training you had to cram everything into 3 days because you call people to a location now that it's digital she said it's staggered you know we just maybe give them you know a module or two a day they learn then they come back the next day so that way learning itself you know the way in which you teach people you know that itself has acquired a huge positive edge you know during the pandemic and the third is collaboration uh, the one thing the digital uh, age has taught us is it's not about me it's about we you know how do we move from uh, you know me to we for example if you look at uh, let's say you know our customers coming in you know we have to hope and pray that when they make let's say a payment on the last day you know when their policy is getting renewed their bank's net banking infrastructure is up because the customer wants the policy right we just hope you know it's up so that's what so today you have so many players working together that you're really hoping that everybody's uptime is up so the whole idea is collaboration across firms and collaboration within firms and that's what really helps you be future ready because the future is not about being the only star in the firmament it's about ensuring that you are able to work across boundaries across dimensions within the organization and outside the organization the third aspect uh, going back to purpose culture and value and as i said i shared it right at the beginning that i you know that the best way i can showcase this is by using uh, you know our own example what we do in our firm because that's one way i can talk about you know how we can walk the talk so for for example our you know uh, brand logos is caringly yours because we want to demonstrate to our customers and to our partners that if when you talk about insurance we are in the business of care the moment of truth in the insurance industry is the claim process why do you buy an insurance policy you buy it so that at the time of need you know the insurer can come to your aid and that's something we focused on so we've been repeatedly you know uh, uh, gaining ground in terms of reputation awards and feedback in the marketplace you know that we are the most prompt you know claim paying company so that's the whole idea you know how do we care for the customer and also demonstrate this you know by going beyond uh, you know normal industry touch points so for example in terms of uh, health insurance you know typically while firms would focus on how efficient the claim process can be we actually deployed a virtual relationship manager he would call up the customer and say that when you go to hospital you typically have two worries one is moving from illness to wellness and the other is customers find it very difficult to navigate the complex administrative machinery in hospitals he says worry number 2 is not yours it's mine you just focus on recovery and we have had awesome feedback from customers we had an nps in excess of 90 without a single detractor so this is truly about you know how do you drive culture within the firm which reflects in uh, you know a value agenda for shareholders and then which also translates itself into purpose for customers across the entire line so these are two three dimensions if you focus on by which you actually become future ready i'll now come to the second part which is in terms of application migration and as i said you know this is an audience where everybody is being on stage right so you know how is it you know that i can add value to a topic like this so what i did is you know i first you know just call some research in terms of what is application research you know right? the way we understand it right and what is out here is something which you all are aware of what is application migration what are the common migrations and what are some of the best practices right so this is something which you all are aware of and if this is what you wanted to hear then you know there's no need for me to be here so what i did i said let me just you know talk from our own experience you know what has really helped us in application migration and that's what i have here and since i said i'll keep it crisp this is my last slide so what we have figured out you know over the years you know in terms of application migration is that this five step process you know really helps us because we've seen that whatever we do you know no matter whether it's replacing the core whether it's moving from on prem to the cloud whether it's about moving from legacy systems to new systems whether it's about stitching together your core platform your middleware you know or your customer facing assets at the end of the day it really has to be customer first and while it sounds cliched this is something which sometimes you know firms tend to miss because it's just so obvious and it's just so basic so step number 1 you know is to listen to customers right large firms already have ongoing customer traffic how do they listen to customers and new firms it's about conducting customer uh, you know satisfaction or customer need surveys and figuring out 
Now, step number two to my mind is the critical one. This is about figuring out what are customer stated needs and what are customer's unstated needs. Customer stated needs, obvious. Customers have articulated, you know how to fix them. But if you can read between the lines and figure out what are the latent needs, you know, that's when you can, you know, actually make a difference. And let me give you an example. During COVID-19, a lot of customers reached out to us, you know, saying that, you know, of course, we want to buy health insurance and we want to file a claim. And by the way, this lockdown is affecting us. We can't step out of the home, you know, and even if you go to hospital, because there's so much stress on the healthcare system, only people with COVID-19 are getting prioritized. So between the lines, we figured out that customers with minor ailments, you know, they were not able to get access to healthcare. So what we did, we came out with a very simple but a very effective solution. We have an app, which is called Caringly Yours, uh, true to our logo. And we, being in insurance, have an empanel set of doctors. See, so to told our customers, if you're not getting normal access, and this is, of course, beyond the core need of insurance, you can log on to our app and have a chat with a doctor. Do it using text, audio, video, voice. So based on the digital consultation, you get a prescription, and then all you need to do is just go and buy medicine. And customers loved it. Because that was one way by which you know, we were able to meet their unstated needs. Step number three is, uh, of course, you know, to review the current landscape of systems and processes. And typically what we find is that while firms say customer first, the landscape you know, typically shows you silos. Right? I mean, it is department-led. And that is exactly you know, where uh, step number four comes in. And which is where you know, clearly there's a need for re-engineering or Lean Six Sigma, which is figuring out you know, how do you re-engineer the entire landscape because the system is only as good as you know, the input that you give. So therefore, how do you figure out that you make it lean? And only when you do that, you know, will your migration be truly successful. Otherwise, you're just transferring the as is you know, from the current way of working you know, to a new platform. Right? It's like old wine in a new bottle. And step number four, if, if, you, if, you know, if you do it right, only then does you know, step number five come in. And then once you do that, you will find that not only have you been able to successfully migrate, but you've actually been able to reflect you know, contemporaneous realities. Whether it is the constantly shift, shifting customer uh, landscape or regulatory requirements, which of course are extremely important in all our businesses, or even you know, all the broken processes that you would have made an inventory of and which you'd like to fix. So we've seen you know, uh, in our own firm, for example, that where we have followed the five-step process, application migration has been successful. And where we have not, you know, you have had to go back and, you know, start all over again. So I hope I stuck to time. Uh, thank you and, you know, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much to Mr. K.V. Deepu. I would request Mr. Ravi Gupta to please present a memento as a token of our appreciation. And also the latest edition of the Banking and Finance Post magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, please a huge round of applause for Mr. K.V. Deepu, Senior President, Head Operations and Customer Service, Bajaj Alliance, General Insurance. <laughs>